Welcome back everyone to another episode of Liquid Mastery. I'm your host Kelly Link and joining me today it's Brooklyn, an esports photographer. How are you doing Brooke? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to learn a little bit about photography. I think most of my knowledge comes from my cell phone. Okay, so great. you might have a lot to teach. That's totally fine. All right, well first I want to learn a little bit about your background and how exactly did you get into photography? I started very young in photography. I think I was like in eighth grade the first time I really started thinking it was going to be a career for me. Uh, but my, most of my background artistically is like in fashion photography and, uh, and commercial product and stuff like that. Okay, well then how did like your passion from when you were, you know, a young kid turn into a profession later on as an adult? When I was a kid, I just like, I went on a vacation once and I had a little point and shoot camera and I just walked around town taking pictures pictures and stuff and I loved it like I, I just thought it was super fun so I, I kept that attitude with me as I got older and I tried different styles I did film photography and, and digital and, and it's all been just like a very fun thing that turned into like oh I can make money with this well at some point you shifted from fashion to esports gaming photography yeah how did that happen I still do I still do fashion and I do esports and it's kind of my objective to like end up in a space where I'm kind of marrying the two conceptually and I want to be like that 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 be my lane you know is like is like fashion and esports coming together were you always a gamer or did like liking esports come with the photography um no I I started in games really young we had an NES in my house, so. Oh, good. Yeah. What types of photography are there for esports? Uh, within esports, you have four, I would say, main types of photography that are necessary. You have headshots, of course, which everyone needs headshots and like promo shots. You have e commerce, which is like the stuff that you see on the website for sale. Uh, you have your events, which is like, you know, the, the photo of somebody holding the trophy being like, ah. And then your candid social media type photography as well. That's interesting to me because I would feel like almost the candid, the e-commerce and uh, the headshots would be similar. What are the differences between those? I think tonally the, the, there's more of a difference. I, when I'm, I'm saying candid, I also mean including like BTS and kind of like more more casual feeling stuff. It also includes, you know, shoots that are set up just to be social media or just to be, you know, uh, promoting a certain line of clothing or team or game or something. Here at Liquid Mastery, you're not just explaining to me what it means to be a photographer, you're also showing me. So how are you gonna teach me today? Today we're gonna be going over the basics of exposure and generally how to use a camera. And then we're gonna move on to setting up for a photo shoot here in our studio and shooting some photos with Harry. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at that camera. Cool. What do you already know about cameras? Well, a camera like this, probably very little. I know that there's something called ISO that affects the lighting. Yes. Anytime I've shot anything indoors, I usually set it around 700 yeah, to 900. Very good. And I know that this little knob zooms in and out, and that's about it. That's great. So you already have some knowledge of, of how it works. Um, awesome. So uh, I want to start by saying that exposure is the process of light hitting either film or a sensor in the camera to make an image. And there are three elements which control your exposure in the camera. You have your shutter speed, you have your aperture, and you have your ISO or ASA in film. ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor, which is variable in a digital camera. Your aperture or f-stop is the size of the hole that light is allowed through to make your exposure. And then your shutter speed is the speed with which it lifts the shutter to allow light into the sensor to hit the camera. I was always taught to think of exposure as a bucket and the light is water that you're using to fill the bucket. Your ISO determines the size of your bucket. A high ISO means a very light sensitive bucket, making it smaller. Um, air aperture controls the size of your hose. So a uh, straw that you're drinking through would be very different than a fire hose to get water into a bucket. And then your shutter speed is the water pressure that is getting the water into the bucket as quickly as you can. Okay, cool. So I'm trying to get a full bucket when we do this photo shoot. That's exactly what you're going for. So let's let's frame this bucket in different settings. If if I'm an esports event behind the scenes where it's a lot darker, what would I have to like focus on and, and change? Generally in a dark setting, you're always gonna have to use a pretty high ISO. Even though a lot of the time, a high ISO, you still have to have a very wide open aperture to get as much light as you can in, in a dark situation. You're always limited when you're hand holding a camera and not on a tripod 
to a shutter speed that is above uh, 125th of a second because anything below 125th of a second is going to be too long and you'll see movement from your human body. Because we move. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's behind the scenes. What if we're outside and it's like during the daytime? Outside during the daytime, your settings are gonna be totally different. I usually, when I'm shooting outside, stay at ISO 100, which is the generally the lowest you can go. Sometimes Some cameras go down to 50, and usually F16 is what they say at 1 125th of a second. Is, that, is, that is the standard uh, straight sunny exposure. So we've already talked about doing it behind the scenes and outside where you have a little less control, but we're gonna be doing some studio photo shoots, correct? How does that change things up? That's right. Um, so in studio, it is like, I, I think it's a paradise. You get to control every component. You get to control each light and the, the output that it produces, as well as like all the settings on your camera. Like I said, they, they'll stay the same throughout, but varying your lights by different powers can create different effects, so it's really fun to be able to explore a little bit of what different lights do and the control that you get from having strobes. And we're gonna be setting that up right now, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's get to it. Cool. As far as setting up lighting for camera work, my experience pretty much just goes to setting up a ring light around my webcam, so I'm pretty- That's more than none. Oh, okay. That is more than none. Good first step, but I think for you, what would be the first step in setting up a, a shot like this? Well, we already started by putting up our lights, and then we're gonna light around the subject on our seamless. Are we gonna be using all of these? Yes, uh, we're going to be doing a five light setup today. All right, well, let's set it up. Uh, so we're gonna take our C-stands, these create a rest for the, the tunnel for the paper to go onto, so. Oh no, yeah, see, I feel like I'm already break. Okay, That's lots of good. knobs. It's okay, um, so yeah, loosen that guy up, get him in the position you want. So a lot of it is prep work. It's not just taking a camera out and taking pictures of people. There's a lot of prep that goes into photography. That you have you have to do a lot of prep work and you have to like understand a lot of the technical aspect of light ratios and stuff like that. So I'll put my end on and then oh, wow. it goes all the way back. Oh, and wow. then you'll okay. have to kind of like lift up your end to get it in there. Yeah, perfect. Start by kind of rolling out our paper all the way. We're gonna, first we're gonna take our, our clamp and clamp it onto the rod of the C-stand. So now we are going to raise our seamless up. Oh, there we go, okay. Okay, and we'll go, let's not go all the way. We'll say right there is good. And we're gonna go pretty much the height of the ceiling. If your seamless isn't completely level, it will never be a completely even curve on the back, which makes lighting it really difficult. So it's very important to have your, your seamless be lighting and everything be very squared off. So every C-stand, always and with no exceptions gets a sandbag on it. The sandbag goes on the tallest leg and the one that is in the direction of the weight. Do we roll it out now? Yes, oh. let, us, let us roll it out. And then we're going to tape it. Just start by taping down each side. It seems like, or at least from a lot of the other Liquid Mastery interviews that I've done, that there is like, you know, a low floor of cost to like break into the industry. This seems less like that. Yeah, this is a pretty expensive hobby or job to do. What's the next step? Next step I'm gonna say is we should set up our key light. And that is gonna be this one. So what is the difference between the key light and these other lights back here? So your key light is your main light source, which you we use to light your uh, subject's body or face or face and body. In this case, I'm using it to do both. And your fill lights are lights to fill in the shadows just to keep you from getting really dark areas um, that are not what your key light is hitting. So with those and the backlight as well to make sure that the backdrop is also lit, that's a lot of lights. It's a lot of lights. Our first one, I'm gonna put a little bit off to the side of center, and we are gonna want this to pretty much be pointing at his face. Like, come a little bit forward. Right there is perfect. And is that pretty much looking right at your, yes. your head? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Second is gonna be our rim light. We're gonna make sure this is pointed pretty much straight at you. This light is going to be our ambient fill, so we're gonna move it over here right under this little house that we've made for it. I'm gonna raise this guy up. And this needs to be raised as well? Yeah, if you can bring that one up as well, that would be great. 
right That's there? That's perfect, yeah. Okay. And then our last light, which will be the big soft box over there. All right, final light. So we're gonna take this light, and this light is pretty much gonna be just on axis with the camera. Um, perfect, it'll be angled right at where your subject will be. That's perfect. It's gonna get any, any place on me that there's like a, a shadow from this, which is a pretty directional light. You know, it would naturally make shadows under my nose and under my chin. Would you say that this is like a pretty advanced setup or is this like a very basic setup? I would say this is, this is like a, a medium Okay. Medium advanced setup. You know, for something like headshots, I would say this is this is a pretty standard to to advance. And just to remind everyone, we have one, two, three, four, five different lights for this single shot. That's right. Wow. So, would you mind standing in for me for a minute to take some test shots and check out the lighting we set up? Yeah, let's do it. Great. Wow, a vision. Um, Not a good one, but a one. <laughs> This is always what esports gamers do, right? Yes, this is the, the esports pose. <laughs> I look like I could take on Team Liquid right now. You're very intimidating. Thank you. I'm getting very intimidating energy from you. Would you like to take some test photos of me? Yes, and this is a silly question, but I hit this button, right? That's correct. Oh, there. there you go. Wait, you, you, the, you know I had to do it to him. All right, let's see how that, ooh, ta-da! Beautiful. I think that looks that looks pretty good for our, our lighting. Yes. Do you feel like you're ready to shoot with the player? Yeah, I say we let's go for it. All right, cool. All right, I'm ready to take the pictures, but of course we need our guest of honor to be able to take these pictures. Harry, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Okay, great, let's take some shots. Awesome, I believe in you. And what kind of directions am I gonna be giving? A little bit of posing. Okay. I'm gonna have you rotate the camera 90 degrees this way. Oh, oh, okay. And there is this, there's an additional button on this side. Um, also, Kelly, for you, this ring here, uh -huh. you can see if you if you turn it a little bit, you get different zooms. So okay. you might wanna zoom in just a little bit tighter. Let's grab, ooh. See, that looks really good. And You're a photographer now. The lighting is really good too. I think let's typical esports pose. Let's, let's cross the arms. Yeah. All right. So for posing someone, I usually start um, from the feet, and this gives you, you know, control over kind of the way that their body is facing. And I, I like to do a lot of poses that are at a, a, a 45 degree angle body to the camera. Okay. Just because it tends to give people a little bit more shape. It tends to be a little bit more flattering. All right. Just, can you do like you know where you're like thinking, you're pondering. Yes. Boom. What else? You're killing it. Nice. Yes. That's good. A lower angle on your subject Ooh. tends to make them look heroic. All right. I think we've done it. Yeah, your shots look great. You definitely have what you need. You've done a great job, both of you. So thank you so much, Harry. Yeah, thank you again. being here and doing this. And thank you, Kelly, for taking my job from me. And I'm going to take your camera, too. <laughs> All right. Brooke, thank you so much again for joining me here on Liquid Mastery. And obviously, there's a lot of people watching that want to learn how to become a professional photographer like you. So what advice would you give to them? I recommend just trying stuff out on your phone. You know, like if you don't have the equipment, your phone has a better camera on it probably than you realize. So just, just take it out, look at different kinds of lighting, play with different angles of shooting people, look at different subjects too. You can shoot landscape or product or anything. Like I think that it's really fun to explore and that's the best part of, of learning photography. And then with that, you can learn a lot um, through YouTube and there's there's a lot that you can learn and then build on top of with your own creative style and like you kind of just explore the whole way as you go. Well, there's obviously a lot of avenues that you can take in photography, but for esports specifically, is there like a certain pathway to get into that field? No, I think the the first thing is really like the technical proficiency and then the passion, you know, for for gaming and just being in the in the world will help for sure. Well, again, Brooke, thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching. If you want to learn more about the behind the scenes roles that we have here, well, make sure to follow the rest of our Liquid Mastery series.